atheist republic attends and supports protests for Iranian freedom. Um, so I want to actually, this was Armin, Armin's idea to talk about what Babak and I have been doing to support the protests for Iranian freedom because we've been like very active. When we have free time, this is what we're doing. <laughs> so um, I was really excited about this because, yeah, Baba and I have been doing a lot of this. And um, there's a lot I wanted to share with you guys and a lot of amazing photographs that Baba took as well. So this is like one of my favorites. This is from um, last week. And uh, we went to a protest, and this was Vienna's contribution to the global protests for Iranian freedom um, that happened in 150 cities around the world. And whenever I go to a protest, for some reason, I have this instinct to just get to a high place and watch everything. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I found this like signpost. And so I like climbed up this signpost, and I was just standing there. And then someone came over to me and they handed me this flag and they're like, hold the flag and wave it around, blah, blah, blah. So that's what I was doing. And I was hanging onto that pole for two hours, <laughs> just having a blast and like screaming my lungs out. Um, and so I um, wanted to, I was thinking about this event and I was also thinking about a lot of the stuff going on in Iran. And I post a lot about it on my Instagram stories, um, particularly because on my Instagram, I have more of a following there that is like people from my personal life, you know, that don't know me from my activism. They just know me from being Susanna, right? Going to school with me or something. Um, so in there, I'm not preaching to the choir already as much as I am here, for example. And um, I wanted to write about why these protests are important for me like why do i feel so compelled to get involved um and so inspired by the famous song boraye by shervin hajipur that is you know gone viral and armin has done a dissection of that song in um secular jihadist if you're curious um i wanted to write down my boraye's for those who don't know boraye means it means like for or because of so like why are why are you doing something um and Armin, you can also, um, in this post, you can click through the slides so we can look at the other photos. Um, so I said, inspired by Shirvan Hajipur's song, Borai, I wanted to write down what compels me to stand with the Iranian people as they fight for their lives and liberties. For my dear friends who can never return to where they were born, who had to choose between life and everything they've ever known. For the children who are separated from their dying parents because prison awaits them upon their return for their homeland. For my friends who fear for their families when the internet gets shut down. For the little girls that dream of being singers but whose voices can never be heard before crowds because of the sound of their voice inspires temptation. For the atheists, apostates, and homosexuals who are executed for spreading corruption in the land well, the corruption of the IRGC dominates the nation. For the free thinkers whose blasphemies land them on death row. For the Atheist Republic community members that send us pictures of their bodies battered from the bloody kisses of the besiege. For the impoverished thief whose fingers are amputated while the elites create the greatest robberies. For the ethnic minorities who are denied birth certificates and live undocumented because their names sound too foreign and too un-Islamic. For the kidnapped and executed journalist Ruhul Azam. For Sohail Arabi to be reunited with his dear mother Farangis. For all the diplomatic hostages and political prisoners to feel the arms of their loved ones again. And so many other Borayes. Um... I don't know. I think it's like so personal for so many people. And, you know, for me, it's just like personal by proxy, you know, because I have so many people who are so closely personally affected by this. Um, and I really want to explain to people with like greater clarity about 
what exactly is at stake for millions of people. Because, I don't know, in my sphere of being an American, like, a lot of people don't have an insight about, like, what is really at stake. What decisions Iranians have to make on a daily basis. What the the really severe cost that their freedoms come at and what this means for all the people who had to leave. Right. Um, and so I really wanted to highlight that. Um, and, uh, we can also look at a bunch of the other photos that Bobak took, which I love. Um, so you guys can check these out on his website babakdalivan.com and he's every day that he goes to a protest he goes home and posts like just batches of photos all over again so you can see a lot because they keep on coming but this one is really funny <laughs> the photo of this guy holding a sign so the guy on the right he's holding a sign and i don't know how to say it in persian but armin can you can you say actually how to say it in persian because i know how to wait say it. so you actually know, i was gonna highlight this because this is so funny i wanted to read to people yeah what it's says. great there's a whole story so behind you, this too that i can tell you okay so it says not only read them to in islam tune but can read them to in yaki islam tune can you get in in or islam all right uh, do you want to explain it or should I explain it? So the translation, correct me if I'm wrong, is basically not only do I shit on Islam, but I shit on the other Islam of yours when you say this is not the true Islam. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so if I want to, so basically every time the regime like does something vile, a lot of people come and try to defend Islam because like, oh, instead of like helping people, they want to defend their reputation of Islam. They're like, oh, no, this abusive behavior by the government, that's not actually Islamic, right? This this is not the true Islam, right? So basically the message of the sign is like, I shit on both of them. <laughs> I shit on that Islam and I shit on your Islam. <laughs> Whichever version of Islam there is, I shit on both, right? So it says... Basically, they're saying not only do I shit on that on, the, on that Islam that you're saying is not the true Islam, I also shit on your Islam that you're saying is the true Islam. <laughs> it's so, it's, so, it's so funny. Wait, I want to address something really quickly because Gossam is saying that I'm I have the Shalom Hahiz flag. No, I do not. Thank no. you very much for those. So. But excuse me, Gossam is basically making a joke saying that I'm holding the monarchist flag. I'm actually not. I'll show you the imperial monarchist no, flag. So, so somebody asked was asking cosmic heathen because a lot of people are not used to the Iranian flag with a lion in between. A lot of people are like, what is this flag with a lion in between, right? A lot in the protest, right? So cosmic heathen also in the live chat is saying, why is there a Sri Lankan lion? Sri Lankan, why is Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan lion on the inverted uh, Indian flag? What? I don't know what you an inverted India flag. Oh, because <laughs> it's like India. <laughs> oh my God, I've never heard. This is the act. The actual Iranian flag has. This is this is the official one before the revolution. Wow. Uh, don't ever just Susanna. A lot of Iranians will be so butthurt if if somebody described the flag a Sri Lankan oh lion on an inverted indian flag that's how we describing the official iranian flag yo Jesus you have Christ. no idea how oh hardcore God. people treat this, this flag Cos or Cos the, the this, is like, this is an iranian this is a this is blasphemous based on for an iranian nationalist jesus christ people are really really sensitive about this flag especially because the flag changed because of the Islamic Revolution and the Allah symbol was put right in the middle. So a lot of Iranians who are against the regime, they sat, they consider the current flag, the official flag, as sacrilege, right? Because And they consider this flag as something sacred that we need to uh, go back to. So your description of it is pure blasphemy in there for their ears. But yeah, so Susanna is being accused by Qasem by saying that this is a monarchist flag. And a lot of people have assumed that because this was the flag of Iran before the Islamic Republic. And at that time, uh, there was a monarchy. So people say lion is like kingdom and king. So this is the monarchist flag. However, the symbol for monarchy is what Susanna is now showing on the page, which is the lion with the sword, but also with a crown. 
Okay. Yeah, this is the it, imperialist flag of yes, Iran. Flag of Iran. But if you notice this one, there's no crown. Okay. This one has a crown and this one has no crown. So it's not necessarily a monarchist. Um, yeah. Most flag. people who support a secular republic use this flag. Yes. The vast majority. The only people yes. that really have a problem with this flag are the communists, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of people are also butthurt when people keep like they want they don't want the Allah symbol there, and they don't uh, they don't want the Allah sim uh, the lion symbol there as well. So the a lot of leftist Iranians keep like putting different things in there, and a lot of Nash Iranians are butthurt over that. They're like, this is like a flag. It's not like a it's not like a paint book or a pictures like a child's drawing book or something. Like you can't just yeah put yeah yeah in your, yeah so. <laughs> no, it's really yeah. funny because actually, no, this is an important discussion to have because I mean, in terms of like reviewing and giving insight into my experience attending these protests is that arguments and contentions over the flag have actually disintegrated the unity of a lot of these protests. Like they're people are become very sensitive about what flag you show during these protests to the extent that it actually destroys the ability for them to move forward. And this is a perfect example about how when left leading people try to organize, they d split apart and become useless over the stupidest things, over the slightest disagreements, right? Over like basically ideological purity. And what is so important about the protests that we've been seeing for Iran over the past three weeks is that we have seen unprecedented unity. People are putting aside their differences over these little things and saying, you know what, we have a bigger issue that we need to focus on here, and that is bringing down the regime. Um, and to that end, one thing that's been a huge problem, at least here in Vienna, is that one of the organizations that has been organizing a lot of these protests is a feminist socialist group called Rosa Osterich or however you say Austria in German. And they started going up oh, to geez. people and saying, you cannot fly your flag. You cannot show that Iranian flag. You cannot show the monarchist flag. Except then they were flying communist flags. And they were handing people signs and photos that were explicitly promoting communism. And they were handing out these stickers. Wait, no, I need to zoom in. I need a tight zoom in. God damn commies. They ruin everything. Can you see this? Wait, 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 wait. Look at, look at. They were what? telling they were telling Iranians that they are not allowed to fly the flag that they want, but they were handing out fight for communism stickers. Unbelievable. I would so I went to a protest that they organized yesterday. I wasn't at the one where they were handing out these stickers. Babak came home. He showed me this. I have not seen him so angry. Like, not only that, they tried to kick him out of the protest because there have been all these rumors going around about this one guy who has been accused of being basically a besiege or a spy. And they have these photos of him in the crowd. And they said, look, they were holding up a photo and they're looking at Bobak. They're like, look, this is you. This is you. You're one of them, blah, blah, blah. And they started manhandling him and trying to kick him out of the protest. And then people were like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know who the hell you think you are because Babak has been doing this for a long time. Yeah, He's been organizing for a long time. He has a high degree of respect and reputation within this community. You guys are new to this. You don't know who the fuck he is. So how dare you try to kick him out on an accusation that he's working for the regime in front of his community Saying that That's you're crazy. a spy and you don't know who he is and what he's been doing and how much he's contributed to what you're now just getting interested in for the sake of promoting your own agenda. So a lot of people here have started to get really angry because it's become clear to them that when these lefties organize for the sake of free Iran... It's not really for the sake of free Iran because then they say, oh, no, you can't show this, you can't show that. They have the nerve to tell Iranians at a moment like this how to express themselves. 
are you fucking kidding me? The whole reason, like, why Iranians are in the street is for free expression. And then in a country where they came to flee for their lives, you now have the nerve to dictate how they express how they would like their future representative government to be? Like, come on. But then but then it's okay when people are flying flags for Kurdish communist organizations or international socialist alternative. Like, it's disgusting. And after that happened, Babak had a ton of people from his community messaging him outraged like railing this organization for the way that they are just like bald faced trying to appropriate what what they're fighting for and what i find really interesting is that within iran we are seeing an amazing showing of just multi-ethnic unity right like people not buying into propaganda that this is about ses- cessationism, like not buying into separatist insurgents propaganda from the regime, not buying into racist narratives and saying we are all Iranians, Kurdistan is our heart, like Baluchistan is our eyes, like we are all together, right? We're not going to let you fear monger about splitting of borders or anything to try to disintegrate our movement. They are de-emphasizing, de-emphasizing the importance of racial or ethnic identity, right? For the sake of a liberatory more like national civic nationalism identity right and but what i see from people on the outside is a lot of people in western circles who have spent their whole time in the west you know whatever that means they are putting a ton of emphasis on the kurdish angle of things which i think is super interesting they're putting more emphasis on masa's kurdish identity than Masa's own family is. Like Masa's family is like, she's Iranian. You know, yes, she has a Kurdish ethnicity, but she's an Iranian woman. But people on the outside that I've noticed in many protests, especially from these commies and other people who harp on and on about Western imperialism, they make, I've seen essentially like a competition over how much we can talk about how much we can like defer to Kurdistan. Like I've seen people posting basically like, if you don't call her Gina Amini, you are erasing her Kurdish identity and you're disgusting. You don't care about Kurdish people at all because you're using the name that she's, the farce name that she's forced to use by the government, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, a lot of people don't know her given name is Gina. Like calm the fuck down. Is that what you're gonna like, like bite at people's hands at when they're doing their best to raise awareness about a situation. I find it so interesting that it's people outside of Iran who are putting such an emphasis on that angle when it's the people that were born and raised there, the people that are still there that are like, no, this that's, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, in some ways it does like matter that she's Kurdish because we do care about how they are mistreated, but that's not, what we're emphasizing for the sake of bringing this forward. Am, am I making yeah, the, sense? The, her own family addressed this, that they're like, don't, you know, we are Iranian and don't try to use our Kurdish ethnicity as a way to divide us from the rest of Iran, right? Like this is, you know, the, it's the, the Iranian people have rised up and they're defending us and our family and we're united as Iranians. So that was, you know, that was that's what their family said. Yeah, and they acknowledge that they're trying to don't make this a better, you know, the 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 government itself is already making this about race. We don't need to add to that. Okay, that's what. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to All think right. if there's anything else I wanted to cover today or other stuff we wanted to talk about. Oh, can you pull up um, Bobak's Instagram? Yes. So if you guys would like to see what the Atheist Republic leadership is doing uh, to engage and support in the Iranian protests, go follow Babak Dalvan on Instagram. And he has, if you scroll down, um, every time we go to a protest or anything, he makes these amazing edits and reels of everything that happened at the protest. 
So I think it's such a cool way to see how like people are getting involved and it's also very creative and extremely well done. <laughs> um, so it's a lot of fun. So make sure to uh, go follow him and check it out and you can see what we're doing, what it looks like, what it feels to be there and make sure to, yeah, look for protests and demonstrations within your own city or your country um, because it does mean a lot to people to see non-Iranians engaging in these protests and seeing that they care. Like, people are so nice to me <laughs> when I attend because they're not used to seeing, like, non-Iranian people showing up and actually caring. And um, it it really touches my heart. Like, in it, I want, I want them to see that it's not, like, just me. I want to see how, them to see how large the support really is. Um, people are so sweet to me yesterday. Like, um, a lot of, many people don't necessarily speak English. I mean, because I mean, it's not an English speaking country. Um, and yesterday there was this lady who's really nice to me. And then her daughter spoke a little bit of English and they're like, oh, you're, you're American. Oh my gosh. Wow. And then she said to me as best she can, she's like, when Iran is free, like you should come with us home. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. That's beautiful. Yeah. And it also made me really emotional because it's just like, there are so many people that just want to go home. No. And it's amazing to see like how hard, you know, they're fighting from outside. And it's so important because the power of the diaspora is a huge reason why this is getting the attention it's getting. It's because of Iranians outside of Iran who are screaming at the top of their lungs that it's getting attention. And yeah. I know that it matters a lot to them and they really want what's best for where they're from. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, Susie's going to cry. After the show last week, someone messaged me. They're like, go take care of yourself. You had like two or three emotional breakdowns. I'm like, one, that's a daily occurrence. It's not a big deal. But two, I think it's kind of funny when people see me crying on the show and ask me like if I'm okay. Like for me, me crying is not an expression of me being not okay. It's like, just, it's how I express my emotions yeah. and like what's going on in my heart, you know, like my heart yeah, is it, broken. It's how I show it. I can't think you it. should be. At, yeah. I mean, I, it, it kind of means it, it kind of is an indication that you're okay because that you have enough sympathy for other people. So like, yeah, it's, you're more okay than most people. I think actually because true bigger, because you have a, a yeah. Okay. I think get my best selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.